Okay, so we're very near the end. <clears throat> this part is basically going over the stuff that kind of finishes it off and unifies all the different parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some overall lighting uh, to the thing, uh, which should hopefully bring all these parts together um, and also just add a bit more variation across the gradient. Um, we're also going to do some uh, kind of light lightening up of a few areas, some blending. We've added a lot of occlusion in some of these areas. What I want to do is just try and bring some of these surfaces back. Um, so this is what this planes of soft light uh, layer does. <laughs> and the last thing is to just uh, do some sharpening um, with the unsharp mask, uh, which is not part of uh, Substance Painter. It's uh, it, I downloaded it from uh, Substance Share, I think it was. It's actually here on Substance Share. Um, it mimics the Unsharp mask that's in Photoshop. If you've done any kind of games modeling or art, games texturing in Photoshop, the Unsharp mask is like the closest thing you get to a button that you can press that says make, make look good. And it's really, really cool and it makes a massive, I think, makes a massive difference. So um, I'll show you how to use that. The, so the first one is the world lighting, um, which I've got in a fold here called world lighting, <laughs> interestingly enough. Um, I'm just going to create a fill layer. We can see the effects of this. So I'm just going to switch on the folder and it's quite subtle. Uh, the folder set to pass through, so it will affect everything down a chain. Um, if I open it up, basically it's got two um, layers. The first one is the sky bounce, which is set to overlay. Um, and as you can see, what it's doing is basically projecting light, a lighter colour over the top of the surface. But it's only on the top surfaces, not on the bottom planes. Um, and the bottom one is a ground bounce. And that's basically pushing a blue light, or darker light, up onto the, uh, the planes in the opposite direction. So essentially what this does is it, it, it mimics a kind of like a really basic lighting um, or direction of light. With a lot of stylized stuff, that's the thing that you have. You always have a light direction. And obviously we're using some... PBR stuff, so we don't want to have too much of it. But we can generally, where, where an object's going to be placed in the world, that thing's going to be fairly consistent. So we have light coming from above, and we have light being bounced up from below. Um, these are basically set up using um, just a color, so a fill. So this is blue. This is set to the blending mode is normal. It's passing through anyway, so it kind of changes the way it behaves. Um, and then the mask is a, uh, we are using the world space normal, uh, which I'm guessing we haven't used, no, we haven't used before. Um, if, we sh if I show you what it looks like, then basically this is what it's doing. So we're using the normal, the world space normal map to basically say where, these planes are in space, um, so we're basically want it, only want it to hit the planes that are fa that where the normals face in this direction. It's coming down this way, which is what it's doing. Um, as we do this by basically going into let's go into here, and we are using the top to bottom. Um, and then we're controlling basically how much how much of the you know how how many angles are being included in that. So we could just have literally just have 
you know, the flattest faces receive the light. So these are receiving these are receiving it. Um, we can blur that out. Um, we can change the balance how it behaves. So there's lots we can do. Um, if I didn't want it to go from top to bottom, I wanted it to go from right to left. I could do that. Um, and I can combine those two things together. So obviously that one's top to bottom like that because it's essentially inverted. The one above it, let's go back to material mode, is doing the opposite. Look in the mask editor for this one. Using world space normal again. It's using top to bottom, but it's not inverted. So this is set to overlay. If I set it to something like normal, you can see it actually covers a lot of a lot of those faces, which I didn't really want it to do. So I just want it to sort of add to what's already there. Um, so that's what it's doing. Uh, these need to be quite subtle because you imagine there's a lot of colour and things you've already put in, so you don't want to start like you know blasting it with loads of extras. So those two things combined basically give you a little bit of lighting. Uh, if we look at it with this map set to colour mode, you can kind of see it there, you can kind of see the subtle. This is what it is without it. Add in the darkness, add in the light, just adds a little bit more to it. You can see it in there, even without any lighting at all, it kind of it starts defining the form. So let's go back to material. So if we have all these things switched on, what our lighting does is basically does that. So it is quite subtle, but especially on things like the wood, like it really starts to make this stuff pop a bit more. And if you look underneath, it's just darkening up those planes that are underneath just helps push the 3D a bit more. So yeah, so there we go. So that's the lighting, the world lighting. And again, this has an overall effect on it, but I can push this. So if we push this all the way to 100, you can kind of see it's really making that a lot, a lot bluer and that a lot lighter. I'll leave that on for now just so you can see it. Um, the next one on top of that, is this planes of soft light. If I switch this on, it is really subtle what it's doing. In fact, actually, if I switch the lighting off, you'll probably see it a bit better. Basically, all it's doing, if we look at the mask, uh, that one, it's basically doing that. more or less painting um, where I want this colour to basically lighten up what's underneath. This looks a bit garbage at the minute, so what I've did is I added a blur on top. To be fair, that could probably go underneath there. There we go. It really makes sense to do that. And then, last but not least, we have the Unsharp Mask. And what the Unsharp Mask does is just starts to pick out all of the. Um, in fact, let's do this one again. <coughs> so, to add the Unsharp Mask, I basically have downloaded it. Um, if you want to add a resource, you just go to Import Resources, go and add the resource, you can find it where it lives, um, and then you bring it in and you import it to your project or your shelf or your current session, depending on what you want to do. But for this one, I would bring it into your shelf because you're going to use it again and again and again. 
and then what it'll do is it'll pop up in filters and you've got a black and white one and a color one and essentially it works just the same way as other adjustment layers and things that you've done here before drop this in here right on the top on the top of everything creates a pass-through layer and essentially assigns the the, uh, the, the unsharp mask switch our new metal off put my old metal back on and what you can see with the unsharp mask even before I've done anything is it just makes stuff start to really pop and really gives it that kind of feel um, but you can play with this radius to basically increase the effect the area that it's affected outside of the initial sharp sharpen area and then the amount how much you want it to sharpen by As you can see, that's that is the last thing you do with anything, and it really just it can really make a difference. It can make stuff pop. If it's if you like it most of the way, but it's like doing some stuff that you don't like, the chances are what you what you really want to do is you want to probably go back in and fix some of these things. So say you don't like the way it's doing these edges around the the gold part. I'd be more inclined to go back into your gold and tweak this a bit to get it to do what you want it to do rather than going straight for the you know not using it um, anyway the last thing I'll do with that is I'll just get this up to now that I'm fairly happy with it all I'm just going to get this back to 4k right so that's back up to 4k and as you can see all those issues we were having are all gone um, and it's ready to export so let's do that so right click export textures give it somewhere for them to go uh, Uh, I'm just using the document channels configuration, so nothing exciting. Uh, base, so it'll pull out base color, metallic roughness, normal height, normal direct X, and mixed AO. Um, we're going to bang it out at 4096, export, and then just let it do its thing. So here we go, we've got some textures. The metallic. That's the AO. I'll not use that normal map. Is the DirectX normal map? Which, to be fair, is probably exactly the same as our other one because we haven't actually done anything with any kind of height data in this model. Uh, roughness. So they can be scaled down plugged in um, however you want to use them and they should work um, I'll quickly jump into uh, Marmoset and you can see that okay I'm in Marmoset tool bag I'm just going to bring in model file uh, and just pull those to that Add a normal map. That one. Uh, normal maps inside out. So that's because it's direct text and this is OpenGL. So we flip Y. It should look okay. Which it does. Um, then we want the gloss map, which is the roughness map. But it's not, it's the wrong way around, so we need to invert it. So that makes it a roughness map. 
And then we need to bring in the Arido, which is that one. And let's just change this guy's. Um, yeah, so the last thing we need to do is get some. Um, uh, set this reflectivity to metalness rather than specularity. And then bang in the metal map. And there we go. We can, for the fun of it, we can stick the AO in. We want to have a bit of some options with occlusion. Uh, there you go, mixed AO. There we go. But there you go, you've got yourself uh, something that kind of works. It is working. And if I change the sky type, it should work reasonably well with a range of different skies. I think I need to turn this thing around. Some of the skies are facing the wrong way around. Rotation zero. 